so <laughs> don't sit down. Okay, you're not in class anymore. You were supposed to stand, but you didn't follow the direction, so go ahead and sit. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want to sit too? Go ahead. Everybody may sit. There's a lot of power up here. <laughs> you know, we have been through some difficult years the last couple of years. And I was hoping you would still be standing, but that's okay. And I think it would be appropriate for us to show our appreciation to our president and the leadership he has given to get us through these difficult years. And if you would, give him a rousing applause. Thank you. Okay, now you're going to sit again. <laughs> and now we're ready to move on because this is all about you folks. And I would like to begin our prayer with the words from the psalmist. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Let us pray. O most merciful God, we invoke your presence on this most special occasion. Encourage us and uplift us in the celebration that is this commencement service. As the psalmist rejoices, so too our hearts overflow with joy and song this day, dear God. For we too have much to give thanks for with our whole heart. And we too have much to tell in the way of your wonderful deeds in our lives this day. And we too are glad and exult in you, O oh God. And we pause and give thanks for all God's people that have brought us to this time and place. For parents, spouses, family, and those who love us. For friends and neighbors and those who support us. For teachers and professors and those who challenge us and encourage us. And for all those who prepare and serve our food, clean our facilities, and serve as administrators over our campus. For all these and more who have so richly blessed our lives, we do give thanks, O oh God. And most of all, for you, our God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. We give thanks this day. In the name of the living God, Christ our Savior, we offer this prayer and begin this celebration. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I'm the president of Alderson Broadish University and I thank you for that round of ovation for just a moment ago. Welcome to this beautiful campus on this spring day. And hopefully the sun will come out a little later, the humidity will go down, and everybody's gonna be a little happier, believe me. Honored graduates, parents, and family members, Distinguished members of the faculty and staff, our alumni, members of the Board of Trustees and Governors, guests and friends, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome all of you to this celebration, the 148th Commencement Ceremony of Alderson Broadus University. Special thanks to a couple of people that arranged all of this, uh, Anna Marsh and Carla Hively, who were so intimately involved in getting the, all of the details to get all of us together, and I'm very grateful to both of them. Today we proudly honor and celebrate the accomplishments of you, the hardworking students, 
of Alderson Broadish University. Alderson Broadish University is dedicated to graduating successful, civic-minded individuals who will apply their skills and knowledge to improving the world. As we recognize the class of 2019, we affirm the most importance of our university's mission. The mission of Alderson Broadish University is to provide our students with the highest quality education, striving to prepare you to succeed in your chosen disciplines and to fulfill your roles in a diverse society as well-rounded and responsible citizens. Let's go back in history. The date was August 22nd, 2015. Graduating seniors, you may remember that day. That's the day you came to Alderson Broadish University. The class of 2019 arrived 1,242 years ago. For the record, the new president, me, of Alderson Broadish University and member of the incoming class of 2019, I'm one of you, arrived 107 days later. I'm always late for big occasions. So thank you as a member, a, a member of your class who came in in 2015, individually and collectively for your friendship, your leadership, and support. I greeted just about every one of you when I came in. I greeted you as friends, companions, and fellow battlers. I'm blessed to know you and greatly respect your accomplishments. As you go forth and I stay, it's going to take me a little longer, I'm reminded of the words of Jeremiah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope, hope, and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all of the nations and places where I have banished you, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you. I will bring you home. This is your home, and it always will be. The operative word of plans, plans are expectations, aren't they? Times of triumph and trial and perseverance, yet a vision, a vision of hope, that second word, one of the theological virtues, a feeling of expectation. So when you think of your plans, I'll bet they're pretty positive, aren't they? They're full of hope and a future, your future. Thousands of days you've walked this campus. Thousands of days you've come into the Coliseum. Thousands of days are unlike this day. This day you will leave this campus full of plans, full of hope, full of future. It's hard to say goodbye, but we have to. We want you to depart with the toolbox God has endowed you with from the perspective of A.B., a, a well-rounded liberal arts education. I dare say Alderson Broadish University has endowed you with, all, with a bright future as you go forth to serve not only the world, but to serve the Lord. May you leave here with confidence, purpose, and all that is necessary to assist you in achieving your lifelong dreams and happiness. Be assured that you can succeed in all that you attempt when you pursue it with fervor, focus, determination. A little humor, too, I might add. And our prayers will follow you always. Graduates, you are joined today by those who are here to congratulate you for successful completion of your degree. Platform party, 
please stand when I call your name and remain standing. Remain standing. We're having a problem on seating and standing in this celebration, so remain standing, all right? Audience, please hold your applause until they have all been introduced. Dr. Sandra Hoxie is our Registrar and Assistant Librarian. Mr. Michael Luttle, a 1995 alumnus and President of the Aulis and Broadus Alumni Council. Josh Allen, a 2005 alumnus, Associate Vice President of Institutional Advancement, Director of Alumni Relations. Mr. Jeff Rogers, a 1988 alumnus, Vice President for Finance, our Chief Financial Officer, and he will read a citation today. The Reverend Bruce Blankenship, Vice President for Administration, Interim Vice President for Student Affairs, and Citation Reader. This is Carrie Bodkins, a 1990 alumna, Director of Athletics, and Citation Reader. Dr. Eric Shore, Vice President for Enrollment Management, Dr. Andrea Bucklew, Associate Provost, Professor of Criminal Justice, Dr. Jim Austin, Assistant Provost for Extended Learning, Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, Professor of Mass Communications, Mr. Dennis Stark, an honorary degree recipient, Mr. Michael Boisvert, Associate Degree Recipient, Honorary Degree Recipient, excuse me, I changed the degree there, I did mint. <laughs> Chip Schaefer, Secretary of the Aulis and Broadus Board of Trustees and Governors, Honorary Degree Recipient. Richard Lapchek, Honorary Degree Recipient. Dr. Rebecca Hooman, a 1980 member of our Alumni Association, a 2017 Honorary Degree Recipient, Chair of the Aulis and Broadus Board of Trustees and Governors, and she will read a citation to today. Dr. Joan Props, my colleague, 1979 member of the Alumni Association, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, Professor of Nursing. Dr. Danny Frankie, you've already listened to, a Professor of Philosophy and Religion. The Reverend Dr. Carl Giddings. Please join me in applause for our honored guests. Today is my, also my distinct pleasure to welcome retired Lieutenant Colonel Melvin Martin to this assembly, representing the 50-year reunion class of 1969. And we're honored to have you, sir, and we salute you for your service. Please rise and be recognized. At this time, I ask you to please join me in a moment of silence to honor the memory of loved ones who are deeply missed by the Alderson Broadus community. Their names are listed in the memoriam section of your printed program. I furthermore invite you to respectfully include other members of your family and friends who have departed. Let's take a moment of silence. Thank you. The commencement ceremony will now begin. <clears throat> Dennis Stark, will you please join us at the podium? Whereas, upon his arrival and for three years thereafter, Chief Financial Officer Mr. Dennis Stark dedicated his life to the business operations of Alderson Broadus University. It is appropriate that we honor him here today. And whereas his education from prestigious institutions of learning, such as Illinois Wesleyan University, where he earned his undergraduate degree in economics and accounting, the Harvard Business School, where he earned his master's degree, and Princeton University, where he studied international economics, have led to two careers. And whereas, first he was chief financial officer of five banking institutions in four states, including California, Massachusetts, 
New York, and Rhode Island. And whereas his second career led him to higher education, where he served as Vice President for Business and Finance at the University of Rhode Island and completed 11 years of service on the Board of Trustees of the Episcopal Divinity School, where he served as Chairman of the Finance Committee and Treasurer, as well as a member of the Audit, Executive, and Investment Committees. And whereas he has been a board member, held all the officer positions, and been a member of and chairman of numerous board committees in diverse charitable organizations, including historical societies, libraries, preservation societies, social service organizations, and his church at the local, diocesan, and national levels. Therefore, in recognition of this gentleman's distinguished career and his unfailing dedication to Alderson Broadus University, it is certainly appropriate today to bestow upon Mr. Dennis E. Stark the honorary degree of Doctor of Business with all the rights, privileges, and honors attached thereto. Mr. President, I am happy to present Mr. Dennis E. Stark as a candidate for the honorary degree Doctor of Business. Dennis C. Stark, by the authority vested in me by the Alderson Broadus University Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Business. Michael Bouvier, will you please join us at the podium? Whereas, as the founder and president of Longhouse Capital Advisors, Michael Bouvier provided invaluable guidance and professional assistance to Alderson Broadus University, it is appropriate that we honor him here today. And whereas, Mr. Bouvier holds a bachelor's degree in public affairs from the University of Chicago, a master's degree in public affairs and urban and regional planning from Princeton University, and also a master of business administration from Columbia University, and whereas his 28 years of investment banking and financial advisory experience has allowed him to assist more than 75 college and nonprofit borrowers complete their financing including the needs of public and private universities, private K-12 and charter schools, YMCAs, cultural institutions, and social service organizations. And whereas Mr. Boisvert played a key and instrumental role as facilitator and advocate for Alderson Broadus University, and as such, successfully negotiated a settlement agreement with bondholders and was instrumental in our obtaining a loan with the United States Department of Agriculture to secure a sound financial future for Alderson Broadus University. Therefore, in recognition of these and countless other achievements in financial service to public and private institutions and his dedication to the common good, it is certainly appropriate today to bestow upon him Mr. Michael Boisvert, the honorary degree of Doctor of Business with all the rights, privileges, and honors attached thereto. Mr. President, I am happy to present Mr. Michael Boisvert as a candidate for the honorary degree Doctor of Business. Michael Boisvert, by the authority vested in me by the Alderson Broadish University, Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Business.
Chip Schaefer, would you please join us at the podium? Whereas having a law career spanning over 30 years with trial experience representing a broad cross-section of legal cases and having faithfully served Alderson Broadus University since 2001, first as a governor and currently as a trustee, it is good and proper that we honor Mr. Harry G. Chip Schaefer III here today. And whereas his Bachelor of Science degree in Business and Economics from West Virginia University and then his Juris Doctor degree from the West Virginia University College of Law has led him to charter and then serve as president of the Defense Trial Council of West Virginia. And whereas Chip Schaefer has dedicated countless volunteer hours while serving on various boards, including Boone County Bank, Charleston Area Alliance, Charleston Chamber of Commerce, Boone Holding Company, Little Coal Land Company, the Boone County Community Foundation, Alderson Broadus University, and holds membership in the Madison Rotary Club, has held leadership roles in the Madison Baptist Church as Chair of the Board of Trustees, Chair of Finance, Chair of the Board of Deacons, Sunday School Teacher, and whereas as Civic Leader he mentors youth by serving as Scout Master for Troop 289, and as such has received numerous awards, has served as Contingent Scout Master to the National Jamboree, is the current Butts Buckskin Council International Representative and Unit Leader of the World Scout Jamboree. Therefore, in recognition of his dedication and faithful service to youth, community, the law profession, and Alderson Broadus University, it is certainly appropriate to bestow upon Mr. Harry G. Chip Schaefer III the honorary degree Doctor of Public Service with all the rights, privileges, and honors attached thereto. Mr. President, I'm happy and I could not be more honored than to present Mr. Harry Schaefer as a candidate for the honorary degree Doctor of Public Service. Harry Chip Schaefer, by the authority vested in me by the Alderson Broadus University Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Public Service. Dr. Richard Lapchick, will you please join us at the podium? Dr. Richard Lapchick, whereas human rights activist and pioneer for racial equality, Dr. Richard E. Lapchick's life and career has been dedicated to effecting positive social change within the athletic community. It is appropriate that we honor him here today. And whereas his prolific writing skills have resulted in the publishing of 550 articles, 16 books, with the 17th in progress, and his public speaking skills have placed him before the United States Congress, the United Nations, the European Parliament, and the Vatican, and whereas Dr. Lapchick is considered to be among the nation's foremost experts on sport and social issues, and is often described as the racial conscience conscience of sport. He has appeared on numerous national television news and sports broadcasts. And whereas his work in organizing volunteer groups of student athletes and sport management students for reconstruction work in the natural disaster areas of New Orleans, Louisiana, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and Houston, Texas have led to more than 55 weeks of volunteer service to those communities. And whereas, because of his passion and lifelong dedication, he has earned international distinction for his work with youth, diversity, and ethics, conflict resolution, prevention of gender violence, avoidance of drug and alcohol abuse, and combating human trafficking. Therefore, in recognition of his enduring commitment to athletes everywhere and at all levels of play, it is certainly appropriate to bestow upon Dr. Richard E. Lapchick the honorary degree Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights, privileges, and honors attached thereto. Mr. President, I am happy to present Dr. Richard Lapchick as a candidate for the honorary degree Doctor of Humane Letters.
Richard Lapchuk, by the authority vested in me by the Alderson Broadish University Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Humane Letters. Would the following nominees for the 2019 Faculty Merit Award please rise as I call your name. Dr. Ataf Shalan. Mr. Philip Fetty. Dr. James Alston. Ms. Sarah Stevens. Ms. Betsy McComas. And Ms. Carrie Sisk. You may be seated. I am honored to invite. Oh, let's go ahead. Sorry. I am honored to invite Ms. Betsy McComas, this year's Faculty Merit Award recipient, to the stage, please.
<laughs> Ms. McComas is the epitome, the epitome of this award because she demonstrates great personal skills with students while also maintaining a professional demeanor within the classroom. While a lot of professors stick to their office hours, her door is always open, ready and willing to help any student, even if they aren't in her class. Not only that, but she makes a point to know each student's name, along with a little bit about them, within her classes. Ms. McComas is always going out of her way to help anyone in any way that she possibly can. And regarding to teaching, she is a fount of immense knowledge in her field and loves to communicate and transmit that information and energy to us as students. When teaching her lessons, she doesn't just teach from a boring PowerPoint. She opens her textbook and goes through it, answering any questions we have along the way. Ms. McComas does an amazing job with breaking the problems down in order for us to learn the information. Not only that, but during lessons, she makes little jokes along the way to keep us as students engaged. She challenges us and pushes us to our maxes to better ourselves every day. Alderson brought us university and students would truly miss her when she retires. Please join me again in con congratulating Ms. Betsy McComas as this year's 2019 Faculty Merit Award recipient. Thank you, because Dr. Boki told me to keep it short. Thanks. <laughs> You're supposed to give me something. Do your jobs. Huh? Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate it. I'm going to miss you. Thank you. The term tenure signifies appointment of a faculty without a specified expiration date and implies continuous employment until retirement. Tenure is an earned appointment and it demonstrates a faculty member's teaching effectiveness, scholarly activity, and support of the mission of the university. It is my honor to introduce Dr. Valerie Huffman. Would you please stand? She's <laughs> Mr. Thomas Moore, who was not able to be with us today, and Dr. Irina Redemstva. Irina, would you please stand? These faculty have earned tenure appointments at Alderson Broadus, and you've already congratulated them. The criteria for promotion in rank includes excellence in quality of teaching, evidence of professional achievement, evidence of service to and support of the mission of the university. Promotion in rank is by invitation and recommendation of the faculty member's immediate supervisor. It is my honor to recognize Dr. Kim White, who has received the approval of our Board of Trustees for her promotion to the rank of Associate Professor in Nursing. Please join me in congratulating Dr. White. Rarely in life does one meet a personal hero. In November of this past year, I had the honor of meeting one of mine, Richard Lapchuk. Throughout my adult years, I have read of the accomplishments of Richard, and I made a promise to, to myself to someday meet him. In November, I attended the annual meeting of the registry for college and university presidents, and providentially, Richard was seated at my table. What a wonderful coincidence. Following our meeting and a follow-up phone call, I invited and he accepted the opportunity, the invitation, 
to be with us today as the 2019 commencement speaker. A Renaissance person, a leader and mentor, a citizen of the world, a role model, and in the best sense of the word, a humanitarian. For the purpose and honor of presenting the 2019 Alderson Broadish University commencement address, I respectfully and cordially present Richard Lapchek. Good morning, everybody. I want to thank President Barry for those warm words, for inviting me here. Uh, I have discovered through getting to know him that he is a student's president. One of the first things I learned about him is he gave every student on the campus his cell phone number. I don't know many presidents or even faculty members that do that, but it shows what a caring and personal relationship you have developed with those students. And I'd like to thank Kerry Broadkins for the uh, introduction or the reading of the ci citation. And if you don't know, uh, the fact that she is now the athletic director here, less than one out of five athletic directors in Division II are women. It's a long road to go, and congratulations. I want to congratulate everyone here for being part of this incredible university, and especially to the students who are about to graduate and cross that stage that you came here four years ago, or however many you did, that you would earn this degree today. I know you're going to make an incredible impact on our country and the world. And it's a world and a country that is meeting lots of crises head on right now, and I wish you well. I want to start by congratulating you, the class of 2019. I love your mission statement to provide the highest quality education while preparing students to live and work in a diverse society and be responsible students. That's what I want to talk to you about today. You come from 20 different countries, 38 different states. Uh, you've heard that I'm from the world of sport. I speak to a lot of sports audiences. I've never spoken to a student body where 70% of the student body were student athletes. So congratulations to all the student athletes who have been working here. As battlers, you have been prepa become prepared to crush defeat and to take on new challenges. As you leave here today, there are lots of new challenges facing us as a society. I'm so proud to be your commencement speaker. When Dr. Barry asked me, it was an easy decision. Uh, we have a lot of work to do to make our society whole again. Uh, but again, first and foremost, I want to congratulate the students who are graduating today for all they've achieved, their professors, who prepared them to enter this society, the administrators who must be rejoicing for both the work of their faculty and seeing you come to commencement today to graduate, to the trustees who take this university and keep its faith by their hard work and volunteering, and especially to the parents and families of the graduating class. I know you must have enormous pride in your hearts, and you probably have a secret thought that today might be the beginning of the financial independence of your children, and you won't have to pay any more bills anymore. As the father of three college graduates, I want you to know that that's an illusion. <laughs> but I do salute everyone at this extraordinary university. The president asked me to share a little bit about my so-called personal story as a preface to what I, the message I want to give you. When I was five years old, I looked outside my bedroom window in Yonkers, New York, where I was raised, and I saw my father's image swinging from a tree with people under the tree picketing. For several years after that, I'd pick up the extension phone in our house, my dad not knowing I was listening, and it was racial epithet after racial epithet being hurled at my father. As a five, six, and seven-year-old boy, I had no idea what this was all about, except that a lot of people didn't like the person who was for me, the sun, the moon, and the stars. I would later learn that what it was about was, as the coach of the New York Knicks, he had signed the first African-American player in the history of the NBA, and in 1950 there were a lot of people who were not ready for that to happen. But that's who my dad was, um, and had a lot to do with who I later would become. In 1960, he wanted me to go to Europe to visit my sister. I wanted to stay in New York where I was playing basketball at a reasonably high level, thinking that I would someday play in the NBA. 
that he was my father and persuasive, and he, he said, if you go to, to Europe with your mo mother to visit your sister, I'll get you tickets to the 1960 Rome Olympics. And on the way to Rome, we stopped in Dachau, the Nazi concentration camp, and suddenly for me, becoming a professional basketball player had a much lower profile, a much le lesser thing on my mind, seeing what people were capable of doing to other people in the name of race and ideology and religion changed me in that afternoon. But we made it to Rome, and I saw on those playing fields and those arenas that all the things the Nazis used to divide people didn't matter to these athletes. These were athletes who had spent their lives preparing for that moment. It didn't matter where they came from, what they looked like, what they believed in. They were all performing, and it showed me the power of sport to have on our society. Diversity and inclusion can bring perspective. So when I was 15 years old, I was asked to go to a basketball camp of a high school coach at a school called Power Memorial High School in New York City. In those days, no high school coaches had camps. College coaches pretty much didn't even have camps. Again, this is 1961. So there were five other white guys at this camp and a black guy. And one of the white guys who's been a Division I basketball coach for the last 30 years was dropping the N-word on the black guy day in and day out till on the third day I challenged him and he knocked me out cold. The black guy was then known as Lou Cinder, now known as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And my friendship with Kareem has been an enduring friendship that's meant a great deal in my lifetime. But what it especially meant to a 15-year-old white kid from an almost all-white city like Yonkers, New York, that I could see from an urban African-American young perspective what racism was doing to his community and was doing to the country. And I don't have any doubt that it led me eventually uh, after I finished my education and started in the work that I was going to do uh, to become the American leader of the sports boycott of South Africa. For those of you who don't know about apartheid, apartheid was the most racist sy system of government on the face of the earth in the second half of the 20th century, and the entire global community came together to try to strangle the regime so that there could be equality in that country. The first South African team was coming to the United States in 1978, and my job was to stop them from coming. So I went to Nashville, Tennessee, where they were playing in the North American zone of the Davis Cup and held meetings and gave speeches all over town that weekend. And there was a momentum shifting. You could feel it. And on Monday afternoon, before I spoke to the Vanderbilt student body, uh, all three networks were there covering it because I was asked by the African governments to announce that they would boycott the Los Angeles Olympic Games in 1984 if this team was allowed to come. <coughs> One of the TV personalities came up to me before I spoke to the student body, but after the press conference said the financial backers of the Davis Cup had pulled out, looked like the matches were going to be canceled. I announced that to the crowd. It was an anti-apartheid crowd. They went crazy. And when I flew home to Virginia that night, I felt maybe for the first time in my life I had done something worthwhile. The next night, I was working late in my university office, was in the school's library. The library closed at 10.30. At 10.45, there was a knock on the door. And I assumed it was the campus security doing a routine check to see if everything was okay. So I didn't hesitate to open the door, but when I did, it was two men wearing stocking masks who proceeded to cause liver damage, kidney damage, a hernia concussion, and carved the N-word in my stomach with a pair of scissors. Sitting in the hospital that night, I knew that I was going to have to spend the rest of my life using the power of sport to try to affect positive social change. I realized that if people went to the length they did to stop my father in 1950 and 28 years later to stop me, that they must have felt that we were having an effect using that power of sport to try to bring about social change. I listened to women in my life. My sister uh, was, I'm 73, she's now 85. She was in high school and I listened to her cry herself to sleep one night. And when I asked her what it was about, the next day she said, her fellow high school students had chosen her to be the best looking and also the best athlete, but they told her she had to pick one. She wanted to pick the best athlete, but we were 20 years from Title IX, and she knew there wouldn't be the opportunity to do that, to follow in my father's footsteps. Uh, so she accepted the best looking award. She ended up being a very successful model, but that was not what she wanted to do. In my adult life, my wife, Anne, of 32 years, has helped me focus on human rights abuses and the continuing, lack of continuing opportunities for women, and that's become an important part of my work as well. And I'm happy to tell you that 32 years after meeting this woman, Anne Pasnak, I am madly in love with her. I go to bed every night thinking I can't love her anymore and wake up the next morning realizing I do. I'm a blessed man to be able to do what I love and, and be madly in love with this woman. Things are better, but they're still not right. 
In the United States, you've probably heard during the pre past presidential campaign that white women earn 78 cents on the dollar of a white man in the same job. If you're an African American, it's 64 cents on the dollar. If you're a Latina, it's 53 cents on the dollar. Women make up 51% of the U.S. population, but they hold 19% of the seats in the House and 21% of the seats in the U.S. Senate. We rank, if you can comprehend this, 100th globally for the percentage of women holding national government positions. We rank after Afghanistan, Iraq, and Pakistan in terms of the number of women holding national office. Maybe that's in part why the United States ranks with Swaziland, Lesotho, and Papua New Guinea as the last countries on the planet that do not pay mandate paid maternity leave. We rank 46th in the world in maternal mortality rates behind Saudi Arabia, Libya, Kuwait, and Kazakhstan. Only 4% of Fortune 500 companies are led by women. But I also realize in a global perspective, women in the United States actually have made significant progress. I read a book by uh, Nicholas Kristof and Cheryl Wadon called Half the Sky about the uh, struggles of women globally and some of their heroic accomplishments in fighting oppression. But the two statistics that stand out to me more than any other from that book is that more girls and women died simply because there were girls and women in the 20th century than all of the soldiers who died in, the 20, in all of the wars of the 20th century combined. In any decade of the 20th century, more women and girls were murdered in acts of gendercide than all of the people who died in acts of genocide in the entire 20th century. Every morning I wake up and I think of the 32 million girls around the world who are school-age girls who won't go to school that day because it's against the law of the customs of, of that country for a girl to get an education. It's why this heroic now 19-year-old wonder girl becoming a woman, Malala, won the Nobel Peace Prize because she was ready to give up her life for girls to get an education in her home country. Women and girls between the ages of 15 and 44 globally are more likely to die or be maimed by male violence than to die because of cancer, malaria, war, and traffic accidents combined. 100,000 girls under the age of 12 are sold as child brides every year. More than a million women and girls have experienced what's called female genital mutilation. It's a surgical procedure on the female genitalia that has no medical purpose whatsoever. And millions of girls and women are sold into the sex trade, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. Maybe the biggest thing that I have focused my work on is the poverty gap in the United States. The poverty gap between African Americans and whites today, as we meet here in 2019, is greater than it was in South Africa during the height of apartheid between black and white South Africans. The Forbes list of the 100 wealthiest Americans are worth, have, the, have a collective aggregate wealth of all, more than of all 42 million African Americans combined. Try to, try to understand what I just said. There are 100 people in, in the United States that have a collective aggregate wealth greater than the entire population of 42 million African Americans in this country. Some of the consequences, if you're in the top percent of income earners, you're gonna live 14 years longer than if you're in the bottom percent of, of the income earners. We have 5% of the world's population in the United States, but we have 25% of the world's prison population. They're mostly brown and black. They mostly have committed crimes that won't be on the books in the next few years, minor drug offenses. And people say, well, they're gonna get out of jail, they'll get a second chance and be able to move into society. It's not that easy. They can't get food stamps, they can't get federal help, they can't live in, in public housing, they can't vote. Most of all, if they go to ask for a job and the employer says, have you ever been convicted of a felony, that's pretty much going to be the end of the discussion. I listen to voices of young people. Our daughter, Emily, came to me and came to my wife and I in 2009 from Eckerd College where she was going to school and started talking about human trafficking. She told us she wanted to spend her life working on the issue of human trafficking, and we knew something about it, but as we learned more about it, so I have a PhD in international race relations. As part of that, I studied the Atlantic slave trade, one of the most horrific periods in human history. And I knew during the 240 years of slavery being legal in the United States that 10 million Africans were transported to the United States, another 6 million became slaves on the continent of Africa, another 8 million on the continent of, in, in Asia. In other words, 240 years, 24 million people were enslaved from Africa. Today, as we meet here in this historic gymnasium and coliseum, it's estimated that there are 32 million people living in human slavery today more than a million in the United States. I listen to older people. I'm not somebody who gets angry very often. 
Uh, but I was angry in the six days after Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans and 100,000 mostly African Americans were stranded in this convention center in Superdome with no water, no help, no sanitary conditions until Wolf Blitzer put their pictures and the true story of what was going on on the screen of CNN and the split screen images. I went there nine days after the storm to Baton Rouge with the Orlando Magic, with whom we're a partner uh, in our graduate program. And I went there, as I said, as an angry person, but the anger dissipated quickly as I met the people in those shelters. They weren't angry, they had hope, they were resilient, and in the last hour that I was there, I saw a long line of people getting up to speak to an older woman who was sitting on the side of the, uh, side of the church, and we were in a church, and I asked the pastor of the church who she was, and he said, her name is Ida Johnson. She's 106 years old, and on either side of her, where she was sitting, were five generations of her family uh, that had been living in the Lower Ninth Ward, which was totally devastated. I went up to Ms. Johnson, and I still, to this day, have no idea what I said to her, but I'll never forget what she said to me. She knew at that point that every home in the Lower Ninth Ward where all of her family lived was totally destroyed. They had no sense of what their future would be. This is what Ms. Johnson responded to whatever I said. God is good. How do you have that perspective with that type of loss? She had that perspective because she knew that her family was all alive and they had the hope of rebuilding. I'm going to have spoken about 12 minutes here this morning. And I'm going to be, and, and in that 12 minutes, if it was a typical 12 minutes in America, this is what would have happened. 34 students would have dropped out of high school. 11 students would have been victimized by violence on school property. A child under the age of 16 would have been killed by a handgun. 900 children were abused. 129 women or girls were battered. 25 women or girls were raped. 28 were enslaved during this 12-minute period that I'm up here in front of you. It's why I wanted to be here this morning to challenge you to be a battler for life to crush defeat and take on the challenges that so many people face in our society that you are in a position to help them with. I don't have any doubt if there are more women and people of color making decisions in our country that all those social justice issues that I talked about would be addressed in a much more systematic way and we can get toward a conclusion for that. I wanted to be here because I know the Alderson brought us community led by your president and faculty administrators, but especially you, the students, is a community that cares and is going to make an enormous difference. So I come from the world of sport, as I said, and 70% of you also do. We have something that nobody else has. If we're on a team and we get in that huddle, it suddenly doesn't matter if the people around you are African American or white or Latino or Asian American or Arab American or Native American. Doesn't matter if you're Protestant, Catholic, Buddhist, Sikh, Jew, Hindu or Muslim. Doesn't matter if you're young or old, gay or straight, come from a rich family or a poor family. That team isn't going to win unless you pull together as a team. Keep that teamwork that you've learned here at this great university and use it for the rest of your life. When I was first starting out in this work, I went to a training exercise and the facilitator asked everybody who was being trained to write down on a piece of paper what they'd like to see on their gravestone. Some people took it humorously, some people took it seriously. I took it seriously when it came to me. I listed almost all of the things I'm going to share with you now. I've added one or two since then, but this is what I wrote. He didn't have to be Jewish to want to fight against anti-Semitism. He didn't have to be a person of color to want to fight against racism. He didn't have to be a woman to want to fight against sexism. He didn't have to be from the LGBT community to want to fight against homophobia. He didn't have to have a physical or mental disability to fight for people who do. He, didn't have, he wasn't a refugee or an immigrant, but he fought against xenophobia. He learned early in his life that we're all cut from the same human fabric. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I hope you know that I'm much more confident that we're going to have a better, safer world because of the people who are graduating from here today. A singer named Janice Stanfield said the fo or had the following lyric that I'd like to leave with you. You can't do all the good the world needs, but the world needs all the good you can do. God bless you. Thank you very much.
Near the back of your program, we have printed a list of honors. These honors were granted during the 66th Honors Convocation on April 13th. Several members of the graduating class were included among the honor recipients. On the following pages are noted those who are elected to the Silver Key Honor Society. Students whose academic work has been of unusual distinction are graduated with honors. Upon, based upon the cumulative average of all work completed at Alderson Broadus University and for the transfer student, this must represent at least 60 semester hours. And many of our graduates will graduate with Latin honors today. We also have three graduating seniors who have completed the honors program of the university, as well as the requirements for their respective major. The program includes special seminar courses and an optional senior research project. I would like to note that last May, Alderson Broadus University began enrolling graduate students in a program in the College of Medical Science and Anatomy. I am pleased to report the successful completion of those students who have achieved a Master's of Science degree in anatomy. The students were awarded, awarded their respective degrees in an early commencement ceremony on Wednesday, May 1st, because they were unable to be here today. Now the moment you have all been waiting for. Would the bachelor and associate degree candidates please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, it is with great pride in the accomplishment of these students that I present the members of the 2019 graduating class who are candidates for the bachelor and associate degrees. My friends, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Alderson Broadus University, with the concurrence of the faculty, I confer upon you the aforementioned degrees earned by those standing and invest you with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereunto. Would the candidates please approach the, the platform? The rest of you can sit down until it's your turn. I need your card. Walla Abo Elin, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. <laughs> Rachel Ad Adamski. Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Kimberly Lynn Allen, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. <laughs> Matthew Amato, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Tyler James Amador, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Victor 
Victoria Noel Anderson, Bachelor of Science, Biology. the second, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Tyler R. Ball, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Alec Colin Ballon, Bachelor of Science, Biology. John Edward Becker, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. John's degree is being presented by his father, Dr. John Becker, former member of the Board of Trustees and Governors. Gil Angelo Behag, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Wendell Bishop, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science. Abigail Malone Blankenship, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Abby's diploma is being presented by her father, the Reverend Bruce Blankenship, who is the Vice President for Administration and Interim Vice President for Student Affairs. Michaelia Renee Balliard, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. <laughs> Jamie Arnold Boyce, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Nasiah Bray, Associate of Arts, Elementary Education and General Studies. Brianna Danielle Berger, Bachelor of Arts, Elementary Education. Nashe Shakira Burris, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. <laughs> Christian Clarkin, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. Faith Ellen Klein, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Wade Michael Connor, Bachelor of Science, Accounting and Business Administration. Krista Leanne Cooper, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration.
Chloe Elizabeth Corbett, Bachelor of Arts, Sport Management. Joshua David Creed, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. <laughs> Haley Starr Cunningham, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Gary Daniel, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Colton Davis, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Rebecca Dawn Davis, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. James Dawes, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Stephanie Marie Dickinson, Bachelor of Science, Mathematics. Clinton Douglas Dillo, Bachelor of Science, Accounting and Business Administration. Nicole Dowdy, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. <laughs> Stefan Ehrentraut, Bachelor of Art, Sports Management, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Joyce Michelle Ide, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. You got a following. George Vernell L. Eli, the second. Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Taylor. Taylor England, Bachelor of Science Biology. Lori L. Estrella, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Farley, Bachelor of Science, Marketing. Angeline May Farinell, Bachelor of Science in Nursing.
Haley Danielle Frost, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. Miriam Garcia de Corral, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Kristen Nicole Garretson, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Hiale A. Gomez, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. <laughs> Carolyn Gail Gujan, Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science. Kirby Ann Gregg, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Shamar Darren Griffin, Bachelor of Arts, Sport Management. Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Faith Grimmett, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Kayla Elizabeth Gradowski, <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Elementary Education. <laughs> Jordan H. Guthrie, Bachelor of Science, Chemistry, Honors Program graduate. I'm going to let you get dressed. Take your time. You're good. You got it? Got it. All right. Zachary Gwynn, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Christopher John Halterman, Bachelor of Science, Physical Education. You made it. Chavez Dewan Harper, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Carlos Hernandez, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. <laughs> Timothy Alexander Hicks, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Terrell Hightower, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. <laughs> Mark Allen Hill, J. 
Jr., Bachelor of Science, Biology. Josiah David Hisong, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Rayella Grace Hoover, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. <laughs> Timothy Lee Hopkins II, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. Kelsey Morgan Hudson, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. Jamie Ann Hykus, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Honors Program graduate. Savannah Jade Jackson, Bachelor of Science, Mathematics. Seku Jata, Bachelor of Arts, Sport Management. Valera Amos Jamu, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science. Vera Diana Chelsea Jefferson, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Corianne Rochelle Jenkins, Bachelor of Arts, Elementary Education. Raya Rose John, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Braxton O'Neill Johnson, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Castina L. Johnson, Bachelor of Arts, Sport Management. Christina Johnson, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Garrett Douglas Johnson, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Elizabeth Jones, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Thank you. Nicole Kelly, Bachelor of Science, Biology.
Tatum Kress, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Shamika? Wait. Shamika A. Langevine, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Emily Nicole LaRue, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Dylan Lawrence, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Gotcha, Tori. Tori Lee, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. <laughs> Kayla Nicole Lester, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Megan Brooke Lewis, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Jeremy Scott Lineberg, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Jordan Anthony Look, Bachelor of Arts, Mass Communication. Shane Michael Mallon, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Martin, Bachelor of Arts, Elementary Education. Jasmine Marie Martin, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. Kevin Graham Martz, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Caitlin Nicole McGuire, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Connor K. McWilliams, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Lindsay Ariana Mick, Bachelor of Arts, Elementary Education.
Samuel Banks Miser, Bachelor of Arts, Musical Arts, Bachelors of Music Education. Damian Christian Monroe, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science. Sarah Elizabeth Nesbitt, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Michaela Newman, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Nixon, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Grant Stephen Noon, Bachelor of Arts, History. Yasmin Leanne Norman. Administration and Marketing. Laura Austin, Bachelor of Arts, Journalism and Professional Writing and Mass Communication Honors Program graduate. Laura's diploma is being presented by her father, Dr. Jim Oston, who is a professor of mass communication, dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, and assistant provost for extended learning. Corey Payne, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. Caleb Michael Pell, Bachelor of Science, Accounting and Business Administration. Congratulations. McKenna Price, Associate of Arts, Education, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice and Musical Arts. Heather Ann Pritt, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. She's my daughter-in-law. <laughs> Jennifer Props, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Jenny's diploma is being presented by her husband, Daniel Props, who is an assistant professor of English. <laughs> Quade Daniel Rayleigh, Bachelor of Science, and exercise science. Jeremy T. Reed, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Sarah Grace Reed, Bachelor of Arts, Elementary Education. William Scott Reed, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science.
Susan Real, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Emily Nicole Rhodes, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Patricia Lynn Ritter, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Reed Rogers, Bachelor of Science, Biology and Environmental Science. Tyler Taylor Morgan Rowe, sorry Taylor, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Zachary Joseph Salmon, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Aaron G. Saunders, Bachelor of Arts, Sport Management. Caitlin Lee Seibert, Bachelor of Science, Biology. <laughs> Todd James Sikowski, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Tyler Schaefer, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. Cody Allen Sheets, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Scott Shingledecker, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. <laughs> Melinda Shreve, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Amber Signs, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Darnell Smallwood, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. Abigail L. Smith, Bachelor of Arts, Mass Communication. Yeah. 
Jamie Lee Snyder, Associate of Arts Education, Bachelor of Arts Psychology. <laughs> Marcus Dwayne Spears II, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Celeste Tennant, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. <laughs> Catherine Tenney, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Sorry. <laughs> Maurice Jade Thomas, Jr., Bachelor of Arts, Sport Management. Taylor Chase Treadway, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. <laughs> Ashley Victor Victoria Vestal, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Maureen Joy P. Turingen, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Joseph Reno Varela, Bachelor of Arts, Public Relations, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Not yet. Allison Kareen Villers, Bachelor of Arts, Legal Studies. Allison's diploma is being presented by her parents, the Reverend John Villers, Adjunct Lecturer in Religion, and Corrine Villers, Scheduling Coordinator, Summer Events. Hold up a minute, Malik. Malik Washington, Bachelor of Arts, Mass Communication. Alani L. Whitaker, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Sandra Smith Webb, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Mackenzie 
White, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Morgan Taylor Winterbottom, Bachelor of Science, Biology. Jess Worley, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration and Marketing. Adam C. Zirkelbach, Bachelor of Arts, Public Relations. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our graduating class of 2019. We stand. Recipients, please stand. Sorry. Hello, my name is Patricia Ritter and I am the senior class president. On behalf of the entire senior class, I would like to extend a huge thank you to the entire faculty and staff for their support and dedication to the success of our student body. I can confidently say that these past few years on this beautiful mountaintop have taught us all many very important life lessons that we will carry with us throughout our future endeavors. I wish prosperous futures and many accomplishments to my fellow classmates. With that being said, the tassel has been part of the academic regalia since 1340 at Oxford. Today, it has become customary at Alderson Broadus for graduates to turn the tassel during the commencement ceremony to show our passage from undergrad students to graduate. Please join with me as we continue this tradition and turn the tassel from the right to the left side of the mortar board. Congratulations, classmates. We are graduates of Alderson Broadus University. Nice job. What do I do now? On behalf of all the alumni of Alderson Broadus University, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the Alumni Association. The Alderson Broadus University Alumni Association is proud of your accomplishments, we recognize your achievements, and we want you to know we will continue to support you and your future endeavors as you leave Alderson Broadus University to make your mark upon the world. It is the hope of the Alumni Association that Alderson Broadus University has been woven into your lives as it has been for me and for so many others before you. As you move from students to alumni, I want to encourage you to stay connected. We want to hear from you. We want to celebrate your achievements and support you in your career and your service to your community. As you step into the next chapter of your life, I want to leave you with a couple of scriptures. First from Joshua 1.9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. 
for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And then from Matthew 28, 20b, Jesus said, Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. May God bless and keep each and every one of you. Congratulations. Graduates, would you please stand? Audience, please give our esteemed graduates, the class of 2019, a warm round of applause. <laughs> graduates, please be seated. Now, I did not make up this pun, but the provost did. Today is May 4th, and may the 4th be with you. And you know what? She was right. May this day live in your hearts all the days of your life. Now, we're going to ask your parents and grandparents Friends, to please rise. And graduates, it's your turn to thank all of them. So will everybody get up? All right. All right, everybody be seated. Family members. Family members, thank you for allowing Alderson Broadus the privilege of having your students in our midst. We thank you with sincere appreciation for the sacrifices that you have made to make this day possible. And we express our deepest gratitude for all that you have done toward this valuable endeavor. Would the members, the distinguished members, my colleagues of the Alderson Broadus faculty and staff please rise. My colleagues, finally, it is appropriate that we recognize with profound gratitude the members of the faculty and staff who have invested of their time and their expertise, their personhood, to provide a quality education for these graduates. Everyone, please join me in recognizing all of the members of the faculty and staff for their commitment and faithful service to Alderson Broadish University. Remain standing. All right, everybody up for the alma mater. Everybody. Far above the winding tiger with its banks of green stand echo over hill and dale. Hail to thee, our alma mater, oldest and broadest hail. In our home among the mountains, with our little town, may we never forget the that still gather round. Swell the chorus, let it echo over hill and dale. Hail to thee, our alma mater, oldest and broadest hail. Crowning still the verdant hilltop, Neath the azure blue, send she forth her sons and daughters, loyal, loving, true. Swell the 
Following the benediction, please remain at your seats until after the recessional of the faculty, staff, graduates, board of trustees, governors, and honored guests. Let's pray now. Creator and caring God, our source of light, we ask that your almighty hand will be upon the graduating class of 2019 as we send them forth. With your classes and grading now complete, may you strive toward excellence in all you do. With the applause quieted, may you celebrate and lift up those around you. With the speeches concluded, may your voices rise to pronounce peace and justice in the world. With the fanfare ceasing, may you find bliss in future endeavors and adventures. With degrees and credentials in hand, May your achievements grow and enrich your communities. As Alderson Broadus University graduates, may you discover goodness in the midst of life's blessings as well as life's challenges. As your careers commence or educations continue, May you conduct your life's work and further education with exceptional skill and integrity. Inspire to go forward and strive to make life better for all people everywhere beginning today. Grace be to you. Amen. <laughs>